Hello everyone and welcome to the Canadian Redneck Channel. Today we have a two-stage clutch out of a Massey Ferguson uh, 165 in this case, but they're all very similar in the Massey Ferguson's the two-stage clutches. Uh, we have to replace the PTO disc in this clutch, uh, so I'll show you the procedure for taking the pressure plate apart to get to the disc and reassembly and so forth. We'll get the uh, camera set up so watch what I'm doing and get things moving along. To start with, before we take the clutch apart, you want to mark the separate pieces of the clutch disc so they line back up in the same order when they go back together because these are usually balanced. That's what these holes in the top are drilled for, is to get the assembly balanced so uh, you don't get a vibration when it's uh, rotating as a mass. So. I always keep a handy dandy paint marker just for that purpose, well for marking parts with, but uh, it works well for this. Uh, anything you can make mark with works fine, uh, like a scriber or a center punch or anything like that, just anything that will make a, a mark that you can easily identify. And it's just a matter of simply putting a, a little dot on each piece so that it all lines back up together when you put it together. Once you have your parts marked, parts marked, uh, you'll have to compress the assembly so that you can get the pins out of these levers so that you can take it apart. I use C clamps. Uh, if you have a hydraulic press out of work too, we get a little tension on this to hold it still. Tension. There we go. That has all those compressed. We'll take these hold together bolts out here, these bolts that uh, hold some tension on the pressure plate for assembling it onto the flywheel. Save those carefully because you'll need them to go back in. Getting those uh, pins out. I'm going to take the pins out of the top on the levers up top here. And these have a kind of a spring clip that hold the pins in place. Freeze up the levers. Just repeat the process for each one of the pins. Yeah. Once all three pins are out, all the levers are loose and free. Just carefully unclamp the pressure plate. Take a few turns on each uh, clamp. <coughs> Excuse me. Take a few turns on each clamp until the pressure is gone. The tension is gone. Pressure is off. And you can remove your C-clamps now. And again, hold on to them carefully because you'll need those back. Should be able to separate the pressure plate. So then take the time lining the discs up. Make sure you pay attention which way that Belleville washer goes. The uh, concave, the convex center goes down towards that pressure plate here. And again, okay, that's a part I didn't get marked. The PTO disc is now clear, I'm going to lift it out, and it's pretty easy to see why 
it was not releasing properly the center of the disc has been pushed in yeah probably quarter of an inch maybe more because it wasn't lined up properly uh, when it was assembled when the uh, transmission was tightened up to the engine I don't know if you can make it out on camera or not but on the edge of every one of these splines the corner is gouged and more not cut off and that's because the tractor the two heads the tractor were pulled together with the bolts instead of being slid together by hand until it touched and uh, that forced the center of this clutch disc meaning that uh, when the clutch pedal is pressed to release this disc this disc is bent enough that it grabs and, and won't release uh, you want to make sure check that you put the replacement disc in the same way as the original disc came in. It's not hard to tell which way the old one was in because it's pushed pretty hard from the transmission side so it's easy to tell which way and this one goes start in. off with the uh, intermediate pressure plate. Each one of these tabs goes on top of the uh, the set screws around the pressure plate. They are what actually activates the pressure plate. And then you look for your identifying marks. You can line it up with the other marks that you made on the pressure plate. And that sits in there like so. Then your bell will spring, bell will washer. And then again, line up your identifying mark. And this is where it gets a little trickier because you've got to hold about four things at once. You get the levers up so they will slide through the openings in the pressure plate cover. There we are. And then you line up. There's little uh, dowels on the pressure plate that you line up with the springs rolling around so that everything is held in place. I like pressure. There we go. Up here square. It's time for the springs on the levers now. The spring goes on the lever with the square side on the top side of the lever and the uh, coils on the top side of the uh, arm of the spring. These are to hold the levers down tight so the centrifugal force doesn't uh, make them fly out against the, the release bearing when the engine is running. It goes on over the little dowels on the arm. It slips down into place and the catches on the springs go into the little pocket on the on the I'm not plate. sure how we, here we go, we can see it. Uh, on the pin, it's got a notch through. You got to make sure you line that up with the hole in the pressure plate for the pin that goes down through that locks the uh, lever pin in place. So goes towards the outside, straight vertical, line it up in the lever and push it home. I usually don't take this. There we go. She locked in now. Now it's time to replace the uh, bolts that hold the two halves the together. Holding together. the two halves together, we can release the uh, clamps now, and that is ready to put back on the tractor. So those are the steps to replacing a captive disc in a two-stage pressure plate. Uh, in this case, for a Massey Ferguson tractor, but uh, most of that translates to other makes as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you have found it informative and helpful. Uh, like, subscribe, share, uh, and we'll see you again. Thanks.